Hi guys, so today we're going to be assembling the necessary clutch wallet. Um, so I'm making the wallet today out of vinyl and fabric. We're only using a little bit of vinyl for like the main panel piece. Um, if you want to see how I cut this out, I do have a cutting and interfacing video where I cut out the necessary clutch wallet as well as the uh, dolly crossbody by Soon Patterns. So if you guys want to see how I cut and interface this, you can go ahead and watch that video. I'll have it linked up above. But uh, for now, today we're going to be assembling this uh, bad boy. So I'm going to start with the front flap piece. Um, here I have my front flap with um, woven interfacing and Peltex on here. I'm not using the... Uh, I'm not, I'm not doing the like uh, outline thing that the pattern has. Um, I just don't feel like it, uh, so we're just doing it with fabric because I really want to highlight this uh, cute fabric. I did design this fabric myself. If you are interested, it will be linked down below my spoon flower, spoon flower shop where you can purchase this fabric if you so wish. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and start with this front flap. So I'm going to be, let me just move you down. I'm going to go ahead and take my flap piece, this is the front, and this is what I attach the uh, woven interfacing and Peltex to, so this will be the front. I'm not doing the border piece on this one just because I want to highlight this fabric a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and take the inner flap piece, so my lining flap piece, this just has woven interfacing on it, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place these right sides together. And you're just going to want to go ahead and stitch along this U-shape. Don't stitch the top edge. We're going to be, that's going to be how we flip it. So just go ahead and stitch around here, but avoid the top edge. In place, especially when we start doing the whole turning portion. I need to thread my machine. That would help a whole lot. Come on. This thing has a self-threading mechanism, but you still have to put it through a little loop to get it into the self-threader, which makes no sense to me. Okay. Now we can go ahead and sew this. And we're just using a quarter inch seam allowance. So I just finished sewing all around this. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a few snips along these curved edges just so it's easier to flip out and turn. You're just going to want to make sure you don't cut through your stitching though. So I just went ahead and did a little snippy snips. I'm going to go ahead and flip this right side out. And then just really make sure you push out those curves. I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to my iron just so I can really press this down a little bit nicer. Alright, so now that this is nice and pressed, I'm going to go ahead and 
just around these three edges I'm going to go and uh, just around these three edges I'm going to go ahead and top stitch. Now if you're making, um, I forgot to mention this earlier, but if you're making one that has a magnetic snap at this point you're going to want to go ahead and um, install that well you can still get inside here so you can go ahead and just like put your metal snap on this side but I'm doing a turn lock so I'll need to cut a hole through both of these layers in order to put my turn lock piece in there so I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch right now but if you're doing a magnetic snap you can go ahead and do that uh, before we go to the next step so yeah all right so now my flap here is top stitched and I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to attach the uh, hardware. So I'm going to just fold this in half real quick just to mark the center. Oops. Okay, so right about here, I think. I'll just go right about there for the hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and just line this up where I think I want it to go. So I think right there is probably good. And I'm just going to take my pencil. And I'm going to draw an oval inside this little piece there. So you'll have something that looks like that traced on. Can you see that? So I just traced a little oval onto my fabric using a pencil. I just traced inside that little hole there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out now. And you're going to want to be very careful when you're doing this because you don't want to cut too much or your thing won't fit correctly and then it'll fall out. So you're going to be very careful when doing this. I always do less at first because less is more. And if you need to take more out, you can always do that instead of uh, having to just remake the whole flap because you cut out too much. So you can always fix it later. So what I like to do is I just like to fold this in half, take my scissors, you want to use sharp scissors for this, and I'll just go ahead and, if I can, just go ahead and snip that. Then you'll be able to stick your scissors into that hole and make sure you're cutting through all the layers that you have, fabric interfacing, lining can be kind of difficult, especially with that uh, Peltex in there. But I try to cut as close to my pencil line as possible because I don't want to overcut anything. So now you should have a little hole cut in your flap there. And I'm gonna see if this fits. Um okay yeah. So far it does. It looks like I have like a little bit of fabric that's gonna come over. So I'm just gonna try to trim that down a bit. Alright. And then I'll just place this back in there and I think it looks pretty solid now so I'm going to take the back piece now it depends really on what you have I know everything's different mm, I feel like I need to trim off just a little bit because you can see hold on if you can see how I have like a little tiny bit of fabric peeping through there you don't want that so I'm going to go ahead and try to trim that a little bit more Now 
I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of fray check. Um, if I can find it. I'm gonna use a little bit of fray, ch fray check around these edges just so that you don't have fraying. Um, so, I'm just gonna put this on the edges here. This may also have help your uh, your stuff stay in place a little bit better. This just helps make sure that you don't have any weird fraying going on. I just really like to coat the edges. Alright. Let me see. So now I'm going to take the back piece and I'm just going to place that on top of this here. gonna really want to push down and then I'm gonna take my pliers and just bend these little uh, notchy guys down sometimes I can even like like the way that these uh, clamp on. They're kind of weird. I don't know if they're that secure, but I mean, it is kind of hard to bend these. So I think as long as the person's not being like crazy rough with the wallet, it should be fine. Okay. I can kind of see a little bit of the fabric peeping through the back side, but that's not too big of a deal because it looks fine on the front. But there you go. So since I'm using vinyl for this, this is going to be my bottom panel. I just cut out a square and then I cut out my two flat pieces separately because I want the flaps to be made out of fabric. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just reattach these. So make sure you're attaching them to the proper sides. If you need to take out your panel piece and measure that, be sure to do that. But yeah, I'm just going to reattach these real quick so that we have our full exterior piece. It should be easy to figure out what side is which because these will actually line up nicely. And when you're doing this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you cut it out so that you still have the seam allowances intact. But yeah, that's what it looked like. I'm just gonna go ahead and sew along the top and bottom. Okay, so now that that is done, I can go ahead and fold these upwards. And then you should have your full panel piece that looks something like this now. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach the other piece of our uh, turn lock to the exterior main panel. So you're going to want to find the center. To do that, I just like to fold this in half. And try to make it as even as possible. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just make a tiny snip at the center up here. There we go. And that is our center, so I'm gonna go to the wrong side. Center's right there, and then we're gonna wanna mark we're going to want to mark a dot that's two and a half inches down. So I'm just going to line up my ruler. And right here is two and a half. So that is where my uh, thing is going to go. So I'm going to take this little washer piece that comes with my uh, thing. 
and I'm just going to center it over that little dot I made. I'm just going to take a pencil to mark the two lines where the prongs are going to go. Alright, so then you'll have something that looks like that, and you're just going to cut these two side prongs. Don't cut the middle prong, just cut the two sides. I'm also going to take a um, small scrap piece of Peltax and put it in here because it's just going to help to reinforce that snap a little bit more because I do not have any lining on my vinyl but the vinyl is thick enough that I don't really need any type of lining so I'm just going to do the same thing with my little scrap piece of Peltex um, mark the lines and then I'm going to go ahead and just make some snips I didn't fuse my Peltex I find that Peltex doesn't really fuse to vinyl anyway, so it's kind of pointless for me to try and do that if it's not going to even work. So I'm just making, I'm just folding my fabric in half and making little snips where those uh, pencil marks were. So now I'm taking my uh, turn lock and I'm going to go through the front of my fabric where I made the little marks so you can see them. And you're just going to want to stick your prongs through that. So it should look something like that now. And then when we flip back to the back, I'm going to take my piece of Peltex. And I'm just going to put that through the prongs as well. There we go. Then you'll take your washer, put that on the back. And then I make sure to hold this pretty tight as I take my pliers. And I'm just going to bend these prongs outward. And this uh, Peltex will also help these prongs from poking through the other side of your fabric through use because these are kind of sharp. So I feel like if, um, you know, after a normal wear and tear, they might poke through the vinyl, which you don't want. So there you go. Your lock is in there. I like to grab my uh, thing here and just kind of test it out, make sure it fits nicely, it's centered, and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah. So now we're going to actually go ahead and attach our flap. Make sure that your turn lock is on the bottom and we're going to be attaching our uh, flap to the top here. So you're going to want to take your flap lining side up. This is very important, lining side up. And I'm just going to go ahead and center this along that top edge here. And we're just going to go ahead and just sew right across there. Um, just a simple basting stitch for now. So I'm just basting this on at like about a quarter of an inch. Now that is basted on and what's great about this is now you can kind of uh, fold this up, <laughs> sort of, you can fold this up to see kind of how your wallet will close. It's a little bit funky but you just want to make sure that it closes nicely. So kind of looks like this, a little bit funny right now, um, but yeah, so it works, everything's centered. So we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Next, we're going to want to take our lining panel. So the main panel lining, and we're just gonna sandwich this on top, pin all the way around, and you're gonna wanna leave a little like three inch gap or so on the bottom so that we can flip it at the end. I know people have done different ways to avoid that weird opening. Um, I know people have like cut a hole in the center of the lining and flipped it that way, but I don't really mind just doing it this way. This is what the pat pattern says to do, so it's just easier, personal preference, whatever, but the top stitching will hide that open seam, so it's fine. 
Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it all the way around this, and then we can go ahead. All right, so I just went ahead and sewed all the way around that oval. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this right side out. So you have the little three inch opening here, so you can just go ahead and turn your wallet out. What's really nice about this is you can really kind of see your wallet come together now. That flap is really thick with the Peltex. I think last time I made this, I didn't put Peltex in the flap, but I kind of like how sturdy it makes it feel. Um, however, I would advise to not do what I did and don't, and to cut it a little bit smaller than your flap so that you don't have um, Peltex in your um, seam allowances. But I didn't do that, so I have Peltex in my seam allowances. <laughs> So, should be looking like this now. I'm gonna go ahead and press the uh, fabric sides here. Make sure if you're using vinyl, you don't press your vinyl because you'll melt it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna really quickly go ahead and press these uh, fabric seams down. Okay, mission accomplished. We are all pressed. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to top stitch all the way around this oval. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little piece that we left open here, and I'm just gonna fold it inwards and pin that. Okay, so that's pinned, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew all the way around this oval here. So I like to start on the side seam, like the side round thing, that way your beginning and end stitch is kind of hidden inside the wallet, that way it's not as obvious looking. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, just using a eighth inch seam allowance. I do have a walking foot on my domestic, so that kind of helps pull this vinyl through. I should have honestly sewed it with the vinyl facing upwards, but I didn't think about that. Make sure if you're working with vinyl that you use a longer stitch length, that way you're not perforating your vinyl, um, or else it'll just rip. <laughs> here because this is really um this is where your uh, hardware is so you're just going to want to be careful not to sew your hardware interior parts. I kind of do it backwards. I know a lot of people, I follow the pattern, but a lot of people like to make the interior parts first. That way they can just kind of 
be done. But um, our exterior is basically all done. We just have to make the interior stuff to go in there. But um, you can kind of fold these flaps in here. And you can fold your wallet up. And you should be able to close it. And you can kind of see how your wallet's going to look when it's all done. Super cute. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and make the guts and stuff that go inside this so that we can actually finish this wallet up. I'm just going to set that aside. I think the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is the card slots. The card slots can be a little bit daunting um, at first, but I promise they're not that difficult. The hardest part of the card slots is probably all the folding nonsense we have to do. So, I need to find the line pieces here. These are my card slot pieces, so I'm going to want to go ahead and take it. I have to do a lot of measuring here, so take it long side. And I like to use, I need to grab my other ruler. The long ruler is helpful for this. But okay, so the pattern literally has a diagram in it that tells you all the measurements you need. So I just like to start from this edge and follow the pattern for what it says to you. So I just line up, I line up the measurements along my, uh, I like to line my ruler up along the bottom edge and the side edge. That way I can make sure, um, why is this so bright? I'm sorry, I don't know why it's so sunny right now, but um, I line up my measurements along the edges of the fabric, that way I know that it's going to be straight, and then I just draw a line. And then I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that, so... Now I'll just line this up to the previous line that I drew and draw the line. Okay, so the top is going to be the uh, where you drew your first uh, like measurement and then the bottom is just going to be the long extra leftover. So we're going to start with the top here and you're going to want to go ahead and fold it. The right side is, or the wrong side's up. So you're going to want to fold this downwards and you're going to want to make sure you fold it so that you're folding it on that line that you drew. So you're just gonna fold it towards you and we're just gonna go ahead and press that. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is I like to flip it this way. You can do it whatever works best for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and just fold it upwards now. So we're kind of making like an accordion style thing but I'm gonna fold it upwards and make sure that the fold is on that line that you drew. And then you're just gonna to wanna to go ahead and press that. And now you're just gonna to wanna to keep folding back and forth along the lines. So you get like an accordion kind of fold type thing going on. So you're just going to keep folding and pressing.
Okay, so now once you're done doing that, you should have something that looks like this. So you have like, kind of like an accordion fold. Um, but you can see how your card slots are gonna start forming. You should have one, two, and three. Um, so yeah, that is all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one now. Um, I'll show you guys again just in case you want like a different angle or something. So I'm gonna try to get you over here a little bit better. Okay, I'll get you a little closer here so you guys can really see. So, this first line here, we're going to go ahead and fold this towards us on the line. And I'm going to go ahead and press that seam. So now I like to flip it this way. So that, that's on the bottom. And you're just gonna go ahead and fold this upwards until you see that other line. And we're gonna fold it right on the line. So it'll look like this, a nice accordion fold. Now the pattern does a really good job at explaining how to do this, but sometimes, you know, it's easier to see the visuals but some people are easier when they read it so you know whatever now I'm just folding it towards me again on that line there it gets a little bit difficult to see the line so I'm just gonna fold it like that and again going up to fold on that line there Press that, and then again we're folding towards us on the line. Yowchies, hot! Don't burn yourself. And then this should be the last fold, right there. Okay. And our second pocket is all pressed and ready to go. All right, you guys, so now we're taking our panel pieces that we just folded, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna top stitch each of these uh, edges here. So you're gonna top stitch there, top stitch there, top stitch there. So you're gonna top stitch each of the folded pieces on both of your panels. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that now. Okay, and then that's Swiss, but this is what it should look like when you're all said and done with that. So you just have the top edges, uh, top stitch there. Let me go ahead and trim my, uh... Okay, so once your top stitching is done, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just baste up both sides of your, uh, pocket panel pieces so we're gonna do that for both both of them 
I'm just gonna sew a line up each side. About an eighth of an inch should be good. Okay, one side done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just do the other side. Again, about an eighth of an inch. This is just gonna hold the all the pocket pieces together. And then if you miss like any kind of stitching when you're sewing it together at the end, it's not gonna be too big of a deal and your pocket panels won't fall apart. Alright. So then you'll have something that looks like this. So now you can see you actually have little like pocket pieces here. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna do the other one real fast. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my panel pieces and I'm gonna trim these down so that they're the correct measurements. Um, I have a little bit of overlap on the sides here. So I'm just gonna trim those down a bit just so they're nice and even. So these are a little bit longer, so I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the top edge, I think. Um, I'm going to just trim off this extra interfacing I have here. Oh. And then I'm going to trim this down to the correct measurements that the pattern calls for. Pattern? Pattern calls for? I can speak today. So now your piece should be a little bit nicer and crispier. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing to this one, trim it down just because I have this extra interfacing hanging off here. I'm just trim the top edge a little bit. And I'm going to line this up to trim the uh, bottom edge down to the correct size. Now, our next step in this process, <laughs> our next step is to take our two uh, panel pieces here, the two card slot pieces, and you're going to want to place them, place this one down here like this so that your like slots are facing up. And then you're going to want to take your other piece, make sure your slots are facing down, downwards, so that like when you place them like this, it looks like that. And you're just going to flip this upwards so that your card slots are in the same direction and sandwich that. And you're going to want to make sure you sew along this bottom edge here. Along this bottom edge here. That is done. You can open this up and you'll have your two um, card slot openings here. So I'm going to go ahead and press this seam in the center here down just so it's opened. I'm going to press it open. Okay, so that is nice and pressed. Yep. Okay, so that's nice and pressed. I went ahead and just pressed that seam open. So that's all good. So now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to mark a line down the center. So I'm just going to do this on the wrong side of my fabric. And first I'm going to go ahead and find my center. Should be 
right about there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. I'm gonna actually fold this in half quick. Yeah. Okay, got my center, so I'm just going to mark a line. Alright, so now that you marked a line down the center, you're going to want to go ahead and sew a line all just straight down the center of this piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now your slot should look something like this, and you should have separate card slots on either side. So now I like to go ahead and just grab like a random card and make sure that my slots are all good and that the cards actually fit in them because if they don't you're gonna want to redo this. Um, but yeah it looks like they're all good and as long as you follow the pattern you shouldn't have a problem with cards fitting. They should all fit. Okay so that's all good. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. So I'm going to take Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, panel piece here and you're going to want to go ahead and lay it down right sides together on top of your card slot piece. And we're just gonna go ahead and sew along the top and bottoms, leave the sides open. All right, so my bottom and top edges of this are sewn, the sides are left open, which makes it super easy just to turn this right side out. So now you're gonna have something that looks like this. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and just press these seams flat here on the top and bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now that that is sewn flat, we're going to go ahead and use a 1 8 inch seam allowance to sew all the way around this square. Okay, so now that's done, this piece can be set aside and we're going to work on our pocket pieces. So, throw that aside real quick. So I'm taking my lovely pocket pieces galore. First we're gonna wanna okay, first we're gonna wanna grab our zipper and our zipper tabs. So now it wants us to take our zipper and we're supposed to measure it so that it's exactly six inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It says to cut off the metal stop edges, so I'm just gonna cut off this little I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of this at the top here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just measure this to six inches and just cut it here. All right. Now we can go ahead and add our zipper tabs on here. So you're going to want to put these so that they are right at the edge and they're facing you face down. And you're just gonna wanna sandwich the zipper between it. So the bottom one is right side up, the top is right side down, and the zipper is sandwiched between the two pieces. So it should look like that. And you're just gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the top edge of your zipper there. All right, so now that's done, we're gonna go ahead and just fold those two pieces up towards each other and you're just going to want to do a little top stitch along this edge here. And then I'm going to repeat the same steps on the other side of the zipper as well. Alright, so your zipper should look something like this now with your zipper ends in place. So we're going to take one of our lining pieces here. I'm going to iron that really quick because it a mess. Okay, so now we're going to take our lining pocket piece and place that down. You're gonna to wanna to take your zipper piece and just place it face up along the top edge. And then we're gonna take our other panel piece um, 
and we're going to place this face down. This is our outer pocket piece. And then we're going to go ahead and just pin this. Okay, and then we're just going to go ahead and sew along this top edge here. We're going to fold it right sides out and I'm going to do a little bit of a pressy press just to get that seam flat. And now I'm just going to quickly top stitch along there. And now we're just going to pretty much repeat those same steps. You're going to take the lining piece of your pocket and you're going to place that face up. Place your zipper face up on top of that. Line it up, and then you're going to want to take your outer piece, place that on top face down, and then we're just going to sew and top stitch along that again. All right, so all the zipper fun is done. So we're going to take this piece here, and we are going to um, fold these right sides together upwards, line them up so that our exterior pocket panels are lined up. I'm going to go ahead and pin this. You're going to want to line up your lining pieces as well and pin those too. You should probably remember to have your zipper open. <laughs> Don't be mean. Now when you get to the zipper, you're going to want to push it towards your lining. So if you can see that, when you're folding it, this little middle piece here is my zipper, you're going to push it towards the lining side and pin that. Again, your zipper side, you get to your zipper in there, push it towards the lining. So like just pinch, push it towards the lining and we're going to pin that. Now you're going to want to go ahead and sew all the way around this piece, you're going to start at the bottom, go up, and you're going to leave this entire bottom where the lining piece is open for flipping. I'm so close to running out of my bobbin, but this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Now you can go ahead and flip this right sides out. Poke out your corners. I'm gonna need some.
And since we folded our zipper towards the lining, your zipper ends should look nice like this. Yeah, since we folded the zipper towards the lining, your zipper ends will look nice and clean. Now, I'm just gonna shove the lining back in here it's not necessary to close that out because when we um, attach everything together, it should catch all that. If you want, if you don't want to risk it and you just want to um, sew that, be my guest. Totally fine. Um, but yeah. It would also be nice to be able to make sure it's laying flat if you sew it beforehand. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and press this real fast. So now I'm gonna go ahead, this is our little pocket piece here, and I'm gonna just top stitch along the bottom edge of our little pocket thing. start assembling this wallet. We have our main panel piece here, lining side up. We're gonna go ahead and take our card slot piece and we're gonna go ahead and center this. Just like that I think should be good. Just center that and you're gonna wanna take the flap and we're going to fold this inward. And you want to do that same thing to the other side. So we're just folding up that edge and we're pinning it in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and sew along both sides of these panels here. You're gonna make sure you do a quarter of inch seam allowance because you wanna be able to catch all the layers that you have. Okay, so I hope you guys can kind of see what's going on here. But really we're just running some straight stitches down the sides, nothing too crazy. Squish this under here. I'm gonna make sure to use a quarter of an inch just so I can catch everything.
should look pretty good. This is what the exterior looks like. I'm using pink. I don't know. I mean, you can match the thread if you want to, but um, sometimes I like a little accent there. So now I just want to make sure. Okay, see, I didn't catch. I didn't catch this part of the card slot, so I'm gonna have to go over this area so that I make sure that I catch that. Looks like I caught it down here, but I did miss it up there. So I'm just going to fold that back up and just sew in a little bit further. Um, uh, I hate doing this. Honestly though, since I screwed that up, I think I'm just gonna run a second stitch line. That way it looks like we did it on purpose. And it doesn't look kind of messy, I guess. So I'm just gonna run another stitch line that's like a quarter of an inch away from the first stitch line I did. This will just make it look more purposeful. That didn't sound good. Okay. Uh-huh. Why? I hate when I pull this off and there's like 10 strings. Like, that's not right. No. No. Okay, BRB got a seam rip. Okay, so I just sewed that second line. And as you can see, everything's caught. So that's good. Um, this is what it looks like on this side, just two lines of stitching. And I'm gonna repeat the same steps on this other side, so it's uniform. Now since I had to do a double line of stitching to get the flaps to stay, I just want to make sure that my all my card slots are still fine. Um, it seems like they are so far, so that's good. I just didn't want to shrink them at all or anything. Yeah. Okay, those all fit. So that's good. We want to add our zipper pockets, so I'm going to grab it. And you're going to place it so that your zipper is facing upwards. So I just go ahead and center this, that looks good, and then I like to grab these long pins and just kind of mark the center because I don't want to uh, draw on this, so I'm not going to do that. Use my pins to mark the center. I'm not sure. I don't know. I didn't want to poke through the vinyl. So I just use two pins to mark the center, and then I'm going to stitch a box around the center, half an inch um, wide. Okay, so I'm just taking this, I'm going to put it under here, and basically. I'm going to go half an inch from where I put the pin and I'm just going to sew straight down more comfortable using like a washable marker or something you can do that I don't have any and I don't want pencil lines so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it going down to that edge we're going to go ahead and just pivot and we're going to sew half an inch up just about 
out there should be fine. Pivot again. And, ooh, don't start sewing, girl. Okay, so, you yeah, just wanna make sure you're touching the line. The lining, the line. Again, to get that side of the pocket there, and just do a back stitch. Okay. And also, if you don't like the way the box looks on the bottom exterior, you can use a, uh, you cannot be like me and actually use a thread that matches, but I mean, it's fine. So, I'm just going to double check that I caught everything inside of my, sorry, screw the sun. Okay, I'm just going to double check that I actually caught everything inside of here in the lining. I don't have any holes or anything and it looks like I did so that's cool so now we're almost done all we have to do is sew up these side thingy side flaps so basically what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna use the pattern piece to mark where we need to fold up the flap piece so basically I'm gonna make markings and then that's where we're gonna line this up with the uh, pocket piece and the other pocket piece and you're basically just gonna like pinch it inside there and pin it so that you have like kind of an accordion wallet type thing so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm just gonna measure as the pattern says and then I'm gonna pin these all cinched like okay so I have my wallet pinned here on the sides so it looks like this you can kind of see how it's coming together now and we're going to sew up these sides. A lot of people find it difficult to sew these sides up on a domestic. Um, I've never really had an issue. You just need a strong needle and it seems to work. I also don't use a ton of interfacing. Um, I only interface the lining of these flaps. I didn't interface the exterior of the flaps, so that might help. Also, I'm not using vinyl on the flaps, so that also helps. Um, it can be kind of difficult because you kind of have to like squish this and contort it to get in there. Um, I know a lot of people that struggle kind of just use grommets, or I mean rivets, they use rivets through here to hold it together, but um, I don't know, I've never had an issue sewing it, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, let me try to get a better camera angle here. Okay you guys, so now sewing this, the trick to sewing this is all about how good you can squish. <laughs> so. I'm just going to start with this edge here. So I like to really pull it out here. You're going to want to just kind of pinch it and get that piece really separated. I kind of fold this back piece back like that and I really try to isolate just what I'm sewing here. So I kind of got it squished real good. Um, I'm gonna just take off that top clip. And I will, my presser foot does lift additional, so I can kind of really cram that under there. I'm also using a walking foot. Um, it'll just kind of help feed this through. Now, I don't sew all the way down because I can't, it's hard. So I just kind of sew a little bit, and that's enough kind of to stabilize the thing. So I'm just gonna really squish all these out of the way. Back stitch, and where's that? I'm just gonna go as far down as I can. So right about there is about as far as I can go. So I'm gonna back stitch, and there you go. <laughs> if 
that's really all there is to it it's a little difficult <laughs> but um if you can see I just did like a really tiny bit if you can see there I just did like a little tiny bit like literally this much um, but that's enough to kind of hold it together there you don't really have to go all the way down it's kind of impossible honestly but um yeah so that looks like I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do the other one as well just in case you didn't understand it the first time okay, so again we just kind of like grab it we smash it <laughs> until we can just get that part there. And we just stick it underneath here. Because again, this isn't very thick at all. The problem is that it's awkward. But I definitely recommend a walking foot if you do not have one. It changed my life, honestly. Um, they're kind of expensive, but I have made NCWs before without a walking foot, so you can definitely do it. It just helps immensely because it kind of just pulls the fabric through for you so you don't have to do as much legwork. Okay, make sure that all caught. Good, good. I'm gonna do the other side now. Now this side, kind of the same way, I guess you could do it this way, but I'm weird and I like to do it this way, because I'm complicated, and I just have a weird way of the, that I need to sew, but I'm just squish, actually, you know, okay, I'll be good and do it the normal way. It's definitely easier if you feed it with the large side up first, instead of trying to sew through that narrow side. My machine don't like that. Okay, that's a good feature on my machine. It like yells at me if it's too thick. So. I think it just got mad at that zipper part. Yeah. Just got a little mad there. But yeah, my machine, if, it, if it's too thick for the needle to go through, it'll just stop and yell at me. Which I like, because then I don't break needles. I mean, I, I do break needles sometimes still because I try to push my machine to do more than it can. But um, if you're not me, it's a nice little fuchsia. All right, now we're just gonna do this last piece here and then we're gonna be done with this wallet. So that's awesome. So really, you just gotta squish. That's all I can say, squish it. This isn't too bad because I don't have the zipper in the way. Woohoo! We're done. We got a wallet. Yeah. Just trim all my little loosey goosey threads. And uh, voila! Yep. That's just what it's going. I'm sorry, the sun is like annoying. Okay. And yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, I just sew that little piece up there and that's enough to hold it together. And this is what it's gonna look like on the inside. And then you can kind of just um, fold it up. You can fold it up and lock that. And just kind of give it a little shapey shape. There we go. We have a finished clutch wallet. This All right, you guys, that is it. Um, the sun is so bad. Um, but yeah, that's it. You have a finished NCW that you made out of vinyl and fabric on a domestic machine. So yeah, this is just what it, the finished product looks like. The sides, you got the bottom there with the stitching um, then you can open it up and the inside is nice you've got a zipper pocket tons and tons of card panel card slots you know your phone can fit in here and everything and yeah 
that's cool I actually like this a lot more than the one that I made before um, I added extra interfacing to this like pocket panel so it's not as floppy and um, yeah and I like that I added the stabilizer to this part because it definitely gives it a little bit more durability but yeah super cute um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it helped you um, kind of be able to make a necessary clutch wallet I know these are very popular in the sewing community um, and I'm sure there's a billion tutorials out there but maybe you know I helped you learn something new um, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will have this pattern linked in the description box if you do not have it and you so wish to make it but um yeah that's all for this video I'll see you guys in the next one I hope you enjoyed bye